We know for sure that there is such a thing as time warp. We also know that time warps create alternative timelines, or if you wish, uh, parallel worlds. The latest known time warp took place around the year 1900. Tsar died, his son Pieter inherited the whole mighty empire. The young Tsar, ambitious and power hungry, confiscated the steel industry, turning it into an incredibly effective war machine. The empire scientists developed weapons of power and destructive force never seen before. So the war began. The Tsar led his forces himself. First, invading his neighbors, and then in furious blitzkriegs, his forces campaigned over the world, creating chaos and destruction. Even though hope was hard to find, in this age of ruthless tyranny, an alliance was formed by the free countries of the world. was a long way to go, many battles to be fought, and great losses to face. This was a time for heroes. Ace here, and we are doing a Let's Play of a game called Codename Eagle. What is it, you ask? Well, it's actually a rather interesting little first-person shooter. It came out first in Europe in uh, the fall of 1990, and then March of 2000, it found its way over here in the U.S. here. Now, they didn't sell that many copies of it. It only sold about 20,000 copies, or some ridiculously no low number like that, which is very unfortunate. But it did lead to some bigger things. Now... Uh, what's interesting about this game is that when it was made, it was made by a company called Refractor Games using the Refractor Engine. And in January of 2000, Refractor Games got bought by a little-known company called DICE. And in 2002, uh, DICE, with the, uh, some, with the developers from Refractor Engines, using the Refractor Engine, by the way, uh, made... Battle, a little known game called Battlefield 1942. So you could actually consider this to be a sort of Battlefield Zero, if you will. It even has the ability for you to jump into, well, not only trucks and motorcycles, but also tanks, uh, air, uh, fighter planes, bomber planes, uh, uh, naval vessels, and even in airships. So really interesting. It's set in an alternate history, World War One. Sorry. It's set in an alternate history, World War One, and it's, well, as you can see here, um, we got the first mission here. We're playing as part of a secret, begin uh, your mission on foot, starting this guy this speak here. Bridge. Stealth is the order of the day, so try and find a way to disguise yourself before moving in and around the village. Expect some heavy enemy presence there. Yeah, good to know. So this is going to be a in the stealth village, mission. You must find some form of entry to the airfield in the north. The airfield will be heavily guarded, so an outright assault isn't feasible. We know that delivery trucks make regular visits to the airfield, so if you can find one, make good use of it. All right. 
Our intelligence reports indicate that some of the roads in the area have been sealed off with landmines, so go carefully. That's good to know. There will be several guard posts on the way to the airfield. Uh, try to pass through these as calmly as possible. Do not do anything to arouse suspicion. Hmm. Once inside the airfield, find and retrieve the secret bomb documents and then make your way back to the mission start point as quickly as possible. Okay, let's get started. Alright, so part of the issue, part of the thing with this game is while it had some very forward thinking ideas behind it, it also had some very bizarre design choices as well. Uh, right, let's kill this guy. Got his disguise here. Good, that's mm, good. The old fool's vodka. The guard won't be needing Ooh. this anymore. I like how uh, this game actually had features like the ability to knock down trees with a vehicle that Battlefield 1942 didn't have. And if it looks like this guy is driving like he's drunk, that's because he actually is supposed to be in this game anyways, so... Yeah, anyways... <laughs> yeah, this game got rated M for Mature, by the way, and I'm sure you can see why. <laughs> Which is curious, considering the Battlefield 1942 was actually rated T for Teen, and so it was actually quite a good few Battlefield games, come to think of it. Anyways, uh, so I was about to talk about some of the issues with this game. So for a start, there is no crouch button, which is very bizarre for an FPS, particularly at this point in time, uh, when it came out. Let's give this guy his vodka. And let's see what we can find over here. Curiously, this game kind of has a mix of both, well, Battlefield and older FPS games like Do. For example, you see... Sorry. Okay. You're now ready for your first mission. Good luck, man. Alright, so anyways, as I was saying. So, like in Doom, for instance, you've got the this game's comparison to the Doom guy's face, which, in this case, it's your character named Red, who's a secret agent for the British. Uh, anyways, by the way, this... I need to go on to that as well, the setting. So yeah, so this is an alternate history of World War One in the 1920s, where... Uh, the Tsar in the 1910s gets killed, his son takes over, and turns Russia into, well, highly aggressive, trying to take over the world, and you're playing it, and uh, you have a coalition of Western European countries trying to stop them from taking over Europe, so... It's very bizarre, it really is, but anyways... Let's stop here. We need to get something from this post here. Identification papers, some ammo, this which will allow us to repair vehicles. Uh, something else that this game does, by the way, that's similar to Doom, well, to Doom, is that you don't actually have any actual reload or magazines. You just, your weapons just pump out a continuous stream until you use up all your ammo. Now, speaking of the ammo, that's one of the issues with the game. There's two types of ammo. All your weapons, except for the knife, use one of these two types. Either ballistics, which all your gun types use, and explosive, which your grenades and I guess rocket launchers and that sort of stuff uses. Give him the identification papers. Alright. So that was, so anyways, so that's a bizarre issue because it means if you run out of one of those two ammo types, you've run out of ammo for half of the weapons in the game or so. Which can be a bit of an annoyance, for sure. So it's a good thing that ammo is relatively plentiful. Another issue is that, by the way, vehicles use the same ammo stock. So if you run out of ammo, for ballistic ammo, guess what? The armored car, you've run out of ammo for it too, bizarrely. So, that's so the grenade here will be extremely useful. Um, Let's see, what other issues are there with this game? Some of the controls are not redefinable. Uh, for example, you, if you use the number key to select weapons, if you want to redefine that, unfortunately you can't really do that. And um, 
the view keys are the F keys in this case, so you can use, for instance, F1 to go first person, F2 to do this, F3 does that, F4 does this. So let's get back to this. Now, some of the other things that this... Okay, so... See, some of the other stuff that's in this Not game that's easy. a little bizarre. Let's see. What a this... Looks like it's gonna By the way, another issue which will really annoy a lot of FPS users is that the shotgun actually acts more like a rifle. The moose head reveals it does not actually have a shot pattern. It just left, three right, doesn't. And three left again. Okay, so we got that. We'll pick up the so the revolver here. Revolver uses only half the ammo that the shotgun or rifle does, but well, it also does only half the damage. It does, however, have twice the rate of fire, so that's good. All right, so let's pick up this. Cutscene will play. General, we are in the last phase of completing the rocky tramp. Our but this play is normal. Will be undetectable and reach further than any weapon in the history of war. London will be turned to ashes in less than five days. As a protective measure, I've mined roads around the base so that the construction can be completed without the risk of enemy attacks. Anti-aircraft guns have also been positioned to assure protection from aerial assaults. I hope you will be satisfied with my work, and I will keep you up to date with our progress until work is complete. Signed, Major Strong. Alright, so now that that's done, let's see what happens next. That's bad. Alright. Heal up, pick up the shield here, or the body armor, which by the way reduces damage. I feel I need to mention that. Now, next step of our little plan, we will destroy the pillbox there. It needs to die. Ow. Good. Pick up one of the... You know what, never mind. So, we do, however, need to kill all the guys that are over here. So. It's a good thing the AI can be a little bit... Ooh, ow. Good thing the AI can be a little bit stupid at times, which their reaction range or a range at which they can see you can be a little bit short, although it doesn't... What? Oh. <laughs> that uh, made me rather nervous there. Okay, so let's get into this armored car as quickly as possible. Click it again. There we go. Okay, don't want to use too much ammo. That could be an issue. So instead, we'll ram kill this guy. There's something about doing ram kills like that in this game. All right, so so like I said, the game is not perfect by any stretch. I mean, there are some very clunky, bizarre choices that they made. But there's also some very good stuff, like the ability to jump into vehicles like this, which I, like I said, I think this is actually the first FPS game to ever really do that. Come on, make it, make it, make it! Whew, we made it! <laughs> yes! That was a close one. Okay, that guy's done. Ooh, this thing's running low on health. It's a good thing we've got that, uh... It is definitely a good thing we got that extra repair thing, I think. Because we are really starting to run low on health on this vehicle. Okay, that guy's taken care of. Okay. I think we did it. Yep. Hooray! Although we are a little low on health, we are going to finish this mission. Successful! Awesome! And we did it in just over nine minutes. Not bad. Not bad at all. So anyways, yeah, this was the uh, first mission of our little Let's Play of Codename Eagle. It's actually going to be the first full Let's Play anyone's ever done. 
some people have done well a few missions for example there's other people that have done missions of this particular level but not a full let's play at least not from any specific account i've seen so hope to see you guys again soon take care peace out